suggesting something like that, that's fine. But I want to find a long-term solution, and I'm willing to be open-minded and realize that we have a divided government, and we're going to have to work together. But we've also got to understand the impact of some of these taxes on the economy, and I think a broad income tax increase right now on individuals and business, small business owners will not help put people back to work. I was going to come here tonight until I, I heard a statement from President Obama at his factory tour. Um, the president said, uh, tell Republicans, all these Republicans need to go back and talk to their congressmen and tell them how they feel. Then he jumped on an airplane, flew to New York for two more fundraisers for uh, $35,000 a plate. Mm -hmm. I don't think we're doing that here. I think we're here telling you that uh, I support what you did. I had no intention of being here tonight, but uh, I support what you did in your vote. We talk we about tax hear, subsidies. Please. We can't hear anything you're saying. We can't hear a lot of this Okay. We talked about earlier about taxes and criticizing the oil companies. I'm not a big fan of oil companies. But we're talking about cutting away subsidies for the oil companies and giving it to the wind farm. I mean, when do we when does the government pick winners and losers here? I think the government needs to get out of the regulation business, let the companies do what they need to do, and get this country working, because until we start letting oil companies drill, and let's face it, you can put a windmill, a windmill on every square acre or every, you know, that you can in the state of Kansas, and you're not going to produce as much electricity as one nuclear power plant. But is it going to happen? It's going to cost wrong. millions and millions That's of dollars. That's wrong. No, it's not. That's absolutely wrong. No, it's not. <laughs> I've seen windmills. I've seen nuclear reactors. Please let, please let the gentleman, just like I have others, get a chance to. I'm going to ask both sides, everybody, have a chance to No, we're, trying, we're talking about picking winners and losers here. You want to, you're going to demonize the oil company for subsidies, and then you're going to turn around and give that same, you're going to give tax benefits to the windmill company. Come on, we're doing that, and it's, it's, it's a waste of money. But again, like I said, um, I'm here to support you. The president thinks that we need to tell you how we feel about what's going on. I commend you for what you did. You, did, you voted no. I'm a strong believer that we could have lived within our means if we kept where it was at. We did not need to raise the, uh, the, the debt ceiling. Force the government to live within its means. I do. Thank you. Okay. You're talking. We need to create jobs. We create jobs. What's the plan? What's your plan? You talk about it. What's the plan? Okay, let me, sir. Let me give you. Let me give you some concrete things I think we could do. First of all. First of all, fix this sound system. That would put someone to work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is a very serious question. I want to I address your question, or sir, and I've mentioned other answers. First of all, I think one of the things that's affecting job growth in this country is the fact that we have a set of new regulations coming down on business owners at a very critical time for businesses. I believe. So you're asking me, people have different plans. Let's tell you what I think we should do. I think we should put a moratorium on all additional rules and regulations right now and stop changing the rules of the game in Washington, D.C. I think that's number one. I think number two is when we threaten businesses with new taxes all the time, we make it, make it difficult for them to determine what their bottom line is going to be. So we spend a lot of time saying it's the business's fault. We need to start telling businesses how to run their operation. I don't think that's helpful. and I think it creates uh, uncertainty for them and it makes it difficult for them to know the cost of doing business. So I think that's a, a very difficult part of this. I think the lending issue is a sort of hidden issue that a lot of folks don't see every day, but that many small business owners are having trouble, if they want to expand, to be able to borrow the money to expand their business. And not everybody, I understand, but a higher percentage than usual are having trouble getting money. You have business owners say, we just can't, we can't find any money. So sir, if you let me answer your question, and I, I can, I'll, give you, I'll tell you, give you a second to respond. Let me finish, I'll give you a second to respond. I'll answer that. Uh, I think that, that those folks who are unable to borrow money uh, are making it, it's hard for them to be able to uh, it's hard for them to be able to expand their business. And a lot of the a lot of small banks now have sat down with a lot of community banks. They're saying, look, that Dodd Frank bill requires us to keep a lot of e more equity on hand, a lot more capital on hand than we used to. When a business owner comes in, they're not able to borrow money to be able to expand their business. So you're not getting developments, you're not getting shopping malls. And the other problem we're having is when you have to put down 20% to borrow a home. We've swung the pendulum too far. A community bank ought to be able to have the opportunity to determine whether it's 5%, 10%. I'm not talking about these 110% loans. That's what got us in this trouble. But asking folks to have 20% down is making, it's really drying up the home building business in this, in this country. 
And if you're not building homes, you're not building things, you're not putting bricklayers to work, uh, uh, concrete folks to work, uh, all those folks. There's a lot of jobs to get through that construction. So I want to get Americans building things again. And there's really a couple ways to do that. One of them is to send more of our money to Washington or have them borrow money from future generations for government-created projects. That was the stimulus bill. And one of the problems with that stimulus bill is less than 10% of that bill went to infrastructure. Most of it didn't go to that. It didn't go to create those jobs that really cycled through the economy. And so there's a problem in that direction. I think the real answer is getting those builders, getting those folks, getting them to start hiring people, putting labor back to work, and those folks in turn will have money and can come into this Jan Lenny's business and, and start uh, buying things again. That's what I think we should do to get the economy going. So. Well, you, 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 the small business owner cannot go into the bank and threaten to default. That, that doesn't help any situation at all. The second thing is, why can't we do like Franklin Roosevelt did and do some work around this part of the country and hire some people through contractors to do it? They're not government employees to help out the concrete workers, the bricklayers, the steel workers. Sure. Get some money out there. We can't just keep cutting. We've got to get some income and that's coming why I think in. Mr. Let me see if I'll keep this going. That, that's why I that's why I that's why I think we missed an opportunity with the stimulus bill when we did not spend that money on those types of jobs. If you're gonna do a stimulus bill, which I understand a lot of folks didn't support, I don't know that I would have supported the broad stimulus bill, I would have opposed that. But if you're going to do it, you ought to do it to put those types of people to work. Instead, it didn't go to those kind of jobs. It didn't go to those kind of jobs. Go do it! Go do it! Because we can't spend it. It's government money. Oh, you people are stupid. Yes, sir, in the back. Yes, sir, yeah. where we don't have that competition, which I think is essential to our, our free enterprise system, that we have multiple businesses competing uh, to uh, earn the, the dollars of consumers in this country, that having 80% of that would be good for competition. I'm very concerned about that proposal and its impact that it would have on Sprint and its impact particularly it would have on this community. We have a lot of good paying, hard working jobs in this community that is a result of Sprint being here. And so the idea that those, those companies would get together and lead to a central buyout of Sprint or put Sprint in a weakened position where they can't compete with that, uh, with that monopoly would be a very big concern. And it's something we've been asking the regulators to take a really good, serious look at because they're asking, at and asking for this to be approved. There's a process for this. And we want to make sure that it's done in such a way that enhances competition, enhances the free enterprise system, not makes it worse and damages it and ultimately hurts consumers and the folks that are going to have to pay the burden from, from that, uh, that monopoly that could be created and ultimately the amount of jobs that could be lost uh, right here in the third district. This is a very big concern. And thank you very much. <laughs> yes, sir. Change the subject just a little bit. Um, is any talk about the trade deficit and reducing it to create jobs or 
have some impact on our economy. We hear talks sure. about a lot of other things. Can you talk about trade sure. a little bit? Yeah, some of this has to do with the, the value of the dollar and its relation where other economies are keeping their dollars, their, their currency specifically weak. And so part of it has to do with the Fed, part of it has to do with uh, the manipulation of currency in, in other countries. Uh, the other part of this has to do with the fact that we need to start making and building things again in the United States of America. Amen. That's a critical part of it. And so uh, getting folks to manufacture things and build things that we can make and we can do it in a way that's cost effective here in the United States. That's why I personally have concerns when we start talking about putting things like cap and trade and carbon taxes on business or suggesting we ought to raise taxes on some of these folks who are the ones that are paying their share, not the ones that are skirting, the but the ones that are paying their taxes. That makes it harder for them to, to create jobs here and it makes, it, uh, let, it makes them less competitive. And what we're seeing is not only the trade deficit, but some of these companies then are moving overseas. We've got to stop that. And it's a big problem. And so uh, that's part of it. Uh, another part of this is, is that we need to develop trade partnerships with countries that we feel like we can have a good opportunity to, to, uh, to send some goods their way. Uh, in Kansas in particular, because of our grain markets, uh, because of the things we produce here, we have an opportunity if the trade agreements uh, with uh, South Korea, uh, with Colombia, uh, some of the other countries, uh, are, we are able to get those approved. Uh, there's an argument that those will create jobs. That's a debate, though. Some of these free trade agreements, folks argue, actually ends up hurting the United States. That's a debate we're having right now, and it goes back to this discussion about what we can do to create jobs. Part of it is the trade issue and the approval of those trade agreements. The President's called on Congress to pass those. Uh, many of us have been working to try to get some of those agreements in place so that we can start selling our goods, uh, our beef, our agriculture products, those types of things that we make right here in Kansas to South Korea and other countries that are waiting for trade agreements and are already going ahead with Europe and other areas. And so that's an important part of it. That sounds like a good way to create jobs. Well, that's, that's part of a, a, a jobs agenda. I think that might be something where the parties can come together. I know, ma'am, you've had your hand up for a while. Please, go ahead. Okay, thank you for taking my question. Yeah, thanks for being here. I'm a constituent of uh, Mission, War 3, Precinct 1. Okay. Uh, as you probably know, Governor Sam uh, Brownback announced uh, yesterday that the state would return, Kansas would return, $31.5 million grant to the federal government uh, that was awarded to help Kansas officials create an insurance purchasing exchange required by federal health reform. And being over 50 and quite a bit over 50, sure. I'm certainly concerned about health reform. Sure. Uh, just would like to know if you agree with that decision or disagree with it and your reason for the agreement or disagreement. Sure. Thank, thanks for the question. Well, I wasn't, in, I wasn't aware that they were even in the process of deciding whether or not to do that. So I'll tell you, the decision kind of took me by surprise. It may have taken some other folks by surprise as well. Yeah. I have not visited with the Brownback administration. I have not had a specific briefing on it. So I don't know, uh, I'm sorry, I'm trying to be able to see here. I don't know what their good faith uh, reasons may be and why they think that is a proper way uh, to handle this. I know that many people are concerned, uh, on the one hand, uh, that we're losing out on potential federal dollars. Many other people are concerned, on the other hand, that by using those federal dollars, we're essentially implementing a law that a vast, uh, that a big uh, sum of, of Kansans and Americans oppose. And so I think that's a real struggle. No, 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 no. So, and I know, and I, and I, and I let me say, the country, you look at the polling, the country's about evenly divided on this issue. Okay? I'm, I'm not arguing that law. that's where we are. And so, and so uh, I, I'm not going to second guess them on that. I can tell you, I think we could have done a better bill in Washington last year that right now we're talking a lot about compromise and a lot about bipartisanship, but that law passed with not one uh, vote from the other side. And I'm not saying who's to blame for that. I'm just saying that passing a bill uh, that didn't have uh, some bipartisanship in it is going to lead to, a, I think, a tough road to hoe for this thing. And I'd like the parties to sit back down and try to reform part of this and try to make it, make it workable. So that's what I'm saying. Right. stimulated local businesses that were able to participate in, and it was supported by Democrats, and uh, Independents, Republicans, by all parties. They went out to the, on the Missouri side, they had the uh, all, day. all day with the tax-free weekend, and everybody went out there and bought, and stimulated the local economy by taking those taxes and eliminating them for those three days. So, but it was just on school items. Mm -hmm. So that is basically a tax cut for a, a percentage of their taxes, and it stimulated the local economy. So it's a, a good illustration that tax cuts can stimulate the economy <laughs> and not have to spend money to stimulate the economy. Yes, sir. You, uh, you expressed your opinion that we should reduce our deficit, but you 